We have covered the work of Frederick Cowles in episode 51. Today we will review his 1936 The Horror of Abbott's Grange. In the title story, the narrator's wife persuades him to buy Abbott's Grange, a house formerly attached to a dissolved Cistercian monastery in the region of Britain. When leasing the place from the current Lord Sultan, he is warned never to open the private chapel after dusk, and is shown a diabolical self-portrait painted on human skin of the first Lord Sultan, who lies buried in a chapel under whose portrait is written, seeking whom he may devour, God frustrate him always. So naturally, one of his friends opens the chapel at night and looses the vampiric spirit of William Sultan, who proceeds to climb out of his painting and starts killing people, before he is finally disposed of. In the house on the marsh, the narrator inherits a house from his uncle Richard, only to discover his uncle had routinely murdered passers-by and torn out and ate their hearts to preserve his youth, chucking their bodies into a nearby pond. Room for One has the narrator on a walking tour of Cornwall in October, and while en route to Wadebridge and regretting his life choices, he springs an ankle and is taken for a ride in a cart full of salt-encrusted barnacle besot and dead people, who drowned when they fell off the same road years ago. The new inn concerns a man who seeks out an old abandoned inn in the night, and is nearly strangled to death by the innkeeper and his wife while asleep, despite both having been hanged for their continual habit of murdering some 80 years back. Terrible Mrs. Green concerns the portly medium wife of the narrator's friend, the poet Reginald Green, who vows never to let him be free even after death, and after she does commit a dying, her bejeweled hand haunts her husband until he is found dead on her grave, in the process of being dragged down into it by her actual hand. The Mandarin's chair concerns Ning Fu of Chinatown, whose daughter is abused by her husband, so he gives him a chair that ends up strangling him. The haunted church has another man on his way to Wadebridge visit the crumbling church of St. Minius, and find it is where the local round people come every night from the sea to seek shelter. The castle in the forest has a British man wander around the ruins of a deserted German castle, falling in love with a dead woman and choosing never to leave it. In The Bell, John Landon is one of many people in the book who insist on trespassing on private property to view the ruins of abandoned churches. In this case, he finds an old church used by the Diabolist Order of Thomases for their human sacrifice, and uncovers a bell which, when rung, makes a hideous man-made monstrosity follow him and seek out his company. One side only concerns a man who, when he finds out his wife is in love with his friend, blows half his face off with dynamite, as another man, walking along the same road many years later, is obligingly shown by the one-sided man himself. Guardians of the Dead has Jim Newman visit a cave city of gypsies in France, wherein Jim's grandfather found shelter in 1852, and where Jim's Fred Gilbert stole a ring from the hand of an enthroned dead queen waiting for the birth of a new god, for which he was driven insane. The Headless Leper concerns another person mocking around in deserted monasteries, and finding the ghost of a Headless Leper pursuing him all the way home for his troubles. Eyes for the Blind has Sidney Jackson become a medium, and then when trying to exorcise a ghost becomes possessed of the spirit of an eye-gouging Scottish wizard, and winds up in the asylum after blinding five people. These stories, while lacking the extra layer of horribleness of an M.R. James, are good, but do slightly repeat in terms of theme and motivation. 